isolation of a lockdown could be the final tipping point. For people with mental health problems, a key to successfully managing their illness involves getting out and meeting people, engaging in meaningful activity, and maintaining supportive relationships with friends and family. The impact of social isolation on vulnerable people who need access to services, groups, and others in the community cannot be underestimated. Day services have been closed. Community groups have ceased to run. Support services have been reduced and befriending services are not visiting people in person. All of these services are a lifeline to so many people. We have thousands of people who are now socially isolated and I know how devastating the effect of this can be on a person's mental health and emotional well-being. How many patients have been admitted to psychiatric hospitals because of the impact of the lockdown? I'm not sure we will ever know. However, in May, the Royal College, College of Psychiatrists said that they were seeing an alarming rise in patients needing urgent and emergency care, and they forecast a tsunami of mental illness. 43% of psych psychiatrists have seen an increase in urgent and emergency cases following the COVID-19 lockdown. At this time, the Office of National Statistics found that almost 50% of the population of Great Britain had reported high levels of anxiety. Psychiatrists stated that older people with a need for psychiatric care were too fearful to seek help and the admitted patients had more severe psychotic symptoms, often relating to COVID. Many patients had developed mental disorders as a direct result of the lockdown. Social isolation, increased stress, and running out of medication. Now, when you know that the fear and the panic have been purposefully generated by the government, through the use of the mainstream media and that applied behavioural psychology has been utilised by the government to increase the personal perceived threat, it makes the perpetrators criminals. Now all of that is based on a SAGE, that's the Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, document that would have the impact on the nation's health of shutting down the NHS during lockdown and effectively transforming it into a COVID-only service. 700,000 operations were cancelled a week during lockdown. Cancer screenings, routine appointments and procedures were cancelled. At least 2.4 million people missed cancer screening appointments during lockdown. The NHS Confederation warns that the backlog of planned treatments, including for life-threatening and life-limiting conditions, is likely to hit 10 million. The lockdown regime has also seen cancer referrals drop by 45%. Some scientists have estimated that this could mean an additional 35,000 excess cancer deaths in the UK. There were no fewer people contracting cancer, but the real-world lockdown, uh, the, the real-world impact of the lockdown regime is that fewer lives will now be saved, while many have undoubtedly already been lost.
virus that is no risk to the majority of people. So what is my message to you today and what do I think we need to do? I think we need to hold our treasonous government to account. I think we need... Drag them into the common law courts. Yeah. We need to rise up. Stand up. Yay! Yay! Defy their rules and any further lockdowns and say no more. seen in London on the 26th of this month. And you are going to be there. Now, I do want to thank, I just want to say where I've been these last few days. Uh, since September the 5th, I've been in Sheffield, Cardiff, Birmingham, Leicester, Liverpool, Downing Street and Truro. And in Truro, we had the biggest demonstration they've ever seen in Truro. And then last night I was on Camelot TV on an amazing interview which you should stream everywhere. And all this is only possible because of people turning up like you and our team. My team, and I want to thank specifically my team standing in front of us. Here we have Tony who's been driving. He hasn't broken many speed limits. And uh, Sonia and Marco here, and um, there's probably others around, but anyway, Diane is here somewhere. Anyway, they've done fantastically sterling, unremitting work, which has got where we are now. And we are, and I want to thank them. Quick round of applause. Thank you very much. We are now getting our message across and the turnouts are getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Our message is twofold. One, there's no justification whatsoever for any of these lockdowns and anti-virus measures. And the contagion fear control games are not to control the virus, but they are there to control you. Yeah. Now, I want to tell you about something which happened here in 1703. You know, more facts is given somebody who just lies to them and gives these phony reports. However, well, what are we going to do about that? Well, first of all, we've got to write more and more to our MPs. And now I'm going to ask you, who has actually written to their MP? Hands up. A fair number. Who will write to their MP within the next three days? And the trade union movement tailed Hitler. And we know what happened. The rest is history. But just as then as now, Hitler is using to a trade and fear to coerce people. Those trade union leaders ended up murdered in the night of the long night on the 30th of June 1934. Now, Boris isn't going to kill anybody like that, but he doesn't need to, because the workforce is being destroyed and the 
every morning next week up in London, making sure every MP sees our campaign. We're going to ensure that every MP knows and that we will not stand for it. And that we are going to be out in the streets, en masse, on the 26th of September, making our voices heard. Because that's what we want. We want a real democracy. A real democracy that is actually made to work for the people. This current parliament was made by the rich and powerful, for the rich and powerful, to keep them rich and powerful. Nothing else. And so we say no more. We matter. Our lives matter. Our voices matter. And they should be there working for us, not for themselves. This is a message from a doctor that is currently not here, but is talking on the phone uh, to us. He's uh, somewhere in the French Sea. Uh, uh, which are opposing uh, various types of science. 
that we have. All about the solutions and what you can do locally and nationally to improve yourself during the Corona regulations. Please welcome to the stage, Corey Gaston. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm not really a public speaker, but I'm very grateful to be given this opportunity by Juliet to speak here today. This is something I feel. I'm here on my Saturday to take out my time to give you some truth. Apparently I'm an infiltrator though, so take everything I say with a pinch of salt. I have got nothing to hide. I work for a company called Public Sector PLC. PLC should give you a clue, it's a private entity. We collaborate with local authorities to help them bring forward development. We have the skills and expertise, the resources in-house to bring to a council partner that doesn't have it. But apparently that equates to me bringing forward Agenda 21. Okay, so I'm now an infiltrator, okay. I've taken out my time, my energy, my effort uh, to come down here and to speak to you or to hand out leaflets and tell you a bit of truth. Anyway, just a symptom of people putting two and two together and coming up with five. Sadly, that's what a lot of people tend to do these days. If you are going to spout lies or untruths about other people, make sure you've got the facts to back it up before you go spouting it and shouting it to other people. It's, it's us. It's us together. Unity that makes is going to make this work. So, a little bit about me. I'm an autoimmune patient. Now, one in six of us are now autoimmune patients. You know, when I first got diagnosed quite a few years ago, it was quite a rarity. But actually, it's now what is the pandemic. This is the pandemic. It's the pandemic of autism and other autoimmune diseases like Sjogren's, like lupus, like rheumatoid arthritis. This is the pandemic because we can't diagnose these conditions until it gets to a point where people have organ issues. This is the disaster we face medically because if it takes an average of five years to di get diagnosed, you may start with a few allergies, a few allergies, and you think, oh, I'm reacting to this now, and then I'm reacting to that. And if you don't address it then, and if we don't get rid of the toxins, in our environment, in our waters, in our sea, down there, if we don't get rid of those, we will end up, all of us, with these reactions. Our immune systems are overreacting to our environment because of this assault on our systems. So the way to counteract this is to eliminate these toxins, and in particular, heavy metals. Aluminium being one of the key components here. We have system and we're going to bring this one in and you are in it whether you like it or not you're the beneficiaries i'm a trustee we'll do it for six months or 12 months whatever it takes right and we'll, we'll get something online in two weeks we've done this on the quiet for that reason right because they know we're on the money i'll tell you that now so this is up and running it'll be on it'll be on the, the web in a couple of weeks and like i say i'm your trustee and just to show you your power Right, I'm going to kneel before you. This is Black Lives Matter. This is a kneel. Do you know why? Because I'm your trustee, right? Now you lot have got to tell me to get up because you're the beneficiaries. Get up. Get up. That's your power. That is your power. Here, stood here. Right, realise that, people. For Christ's sakes, it's in us individually and in groups and in common law courts. We've got 103 all over the country now, from five at the beginning. 103 common law courts all up and down this land serving groups and parliament whatever so that's the strength that's what we want to say since going to probably add a bit 
more melon from me just another minute so to say he's best. He's prestige by the way. So. Hi folks. Uh, all I want to say is uh, this COVID thing is probably the best opportunity we've ever been given to actually realise that we have the power and once we stand in that power there is nobody or nothing that can get in the way. So, thank you. So, it's a question of now recognising that and doing it. Um, that's pretty much all I want to say at this point. the 19th of September down on the docks in Portsmouth. and so forth and you've been getting free leaflets from us which are paid for by this. So anyway I want to thank Julia and everybody involved in this because it's a, been a great South England rally. So Juliet, thank you. And others, there's others too I know uh, but you know Julia especially has, has got this going. And I think the most important things now is to repeat again to everybody write to your MP and say you've got to oppose this COVID renewal legislation or they're going to drum you out of office. Yes. Yes. 